Hey guys, this is Jay Calderon with Jay Unboxing, about to talk about the week's fights and the most prominent fights and fighters, and of course, hand out some fighter grades. And as always, you guys can definitely hand out your own in the comments section below. We'd love to hear them all and let you know what you think and kind of what your grades are. We'd love to hear them all. Decent action this weekend, a couple of decent fights, like I said, with some solid action, a couple of returns from some high-profile names, uh, had a title fight there with a bit of an upset, of course, and kind of some action anywhere from, you know, all the way down to junior bantamweight up to welterweight and some meaningful, interesting fights, and so definitely a lot to look at and kind of unpack here, so without much more stalling, let's get into it. Now, the first fighter I'm going to be looking at here is Chris Eubank Jr. Now, he took on Liam Williams, defeating him via 12-round unanimous decision in the middleweight division. And the grade that I'm going to be going with here is a C+. Now, in some respects, this was a fight of two halves. Initially, Eubank looked great. I mean, if you look at the first four rounds, he pretty much dominates the action, kind of is implementing a style that I didn't necessarily expect him to implement, but was doing it well and seemed to be listening to his coach and Roy Jones and scored three knockdowns out of those first four frames. Really could not have gone much better for him power was there, you know, he was uber confident, and he seemed to class above Williams, which he kind of had been suggesting he was in the lead-up to the fight, so just from a perspective of what you expect, what he's suggesting is happening, and what you see in that first half of the fight, I mean, he's spot on. You're talking about an A-plus performance at that point. However, after those knockdowns in the first four rounds, Eubank seemed to coast. He seemed to see that Williams was tough, was gritty, was not necessarily going to go away, and while Eubank claimed that he was just trying to punish him, at the end of the day, he didn't do a great deal of that towards the latter portion of the fight. That coasting ultimately cost him in some sense, because in terms of his form and control of the fight, he just didn't have that down the stretch. Now, if you're going to judge it based upon the result and just kind of the highlight reel that you might look at, he looked fine. But in terms of the overall performance, it suffered towards the end of that round, those that fight, I should say, in the later rounds, as mentioned, because he just didn't close the show the way you would expect someone to close the show that's going to try to move on and, you know, tackle world honors. Still, he won and gets to move on, as mentioned, did show his level, and to some degrees kind of made you know, an easier fight and better fight for himself than others that have held titles and things of this nature before have done against Leon Williams. So in that respect, he did okay, but overall kind of let it get away from him a bit towards the end, which is why the grade suffers. Now, the next fighter we're going to be looking at here is Jesse Rodriguez, and he defeated Carlos Quadra via unanimous decision over 12 frames, picking up the vacant WBC junior bantamweight title in the process in a solid upset and the grade that I'm going to be going with here is an A-. minus. Now, you got to think about what he did here. He moved up, fought the toughest opponent of his career, went 12 rounds for the first time when he'd only gone 8 before, got the biggest win of his career, and became the youngest champion in world boxing, surplanting Devin Haney. I mean, when you encapsulate the entire performance in just those kind of, you know, spectacular lines... It's a very, very good performance. But then you look at the action, and it matches it. He looked great. He had angles. He showed power moving up and actually dropped Quadras early in the third round, I believe it was. He just showed a lot of poise for his young age, and again, for this being the biggest fight of his career and a title fight at that. Now, in those middle rounds, he sort of faded a bit, but he did come back strong, and I think that could have been as much strategy as anything else, because he wanted to make sure that he preserved himself for those later rounds. And again, by fade, I don't mean that he didn't do anything, but Quadras, again, is a veteran fighter. He's been around the block. He knows how to kind of take it to you a little bit later in those rounds. That being said, I think he looked solid and showed power even in moving up and dimensions to his game. And as the fight wore on, he certainly made sure to close the show strong enough that he was going to win that unanimous decision decision, which he did. When you think of all of these things being considered and the fact that he's a late replacement and moving up and did not have a wealth of experience, though he does have an amateur pedigree, but just not a lot of professional experience, the fact that he was able to come in and do what he did against a veteran fighter shows a great deal of effort and time put in the gym that ultimately came out and came to fruition in the ring, which is why he gets such a high mark from me. Now, tied to that, the next fighter we're going with is Carlos Cadra. Of course, he lost to the aforementioned Rodriguez via 12-round unanimous decision, obviously making it a losing effort in the welterweight title fight, and the grade that I'm going to go with here is a C-. minus. Now, while he was the favorite and he should have been able to beat a late replacement, the reason I'm not going with a D or anything lower is because, quite honestly, he didn't look terrible. 
but it just might not be great news for the 33-year-old. He looked a little bit of a step behind. He looked like his punches weren't having as much of the effect as they might have before. He just didn't look as primed for success as he might be, you know, two, three years ago. Especially, again, when you think he's coming in there against a kid who really shouldn't have any business being able to compete with him. And not only does he compete, he outperforms him. That's just not a great sign. And it could be his age. And it could be that he's been in one too many wars. And, again, for lighter weights, that can definitely be a problem. It also could be that, you know, Rodriguez has just looks so good that in comparison, Quadras doesn't quite measure up. It's hard to tell, but, you know, at the age of 33, he now finds himself in the position where he's going to have to rebuild, which is always going to be somewhat problematic. Now, he'll compete with a lot of guys in his weight class, but he doesn't look like the quadra of old. He kind of looks like an old-ish quadrus at that point, at this point, I should say. And really, it's going to be hard for him to kind of crawl back, especially when, again, under the circumstances, you'd expect him to have more than enough to win this fight. And it was pretty clear from, you know, about the second, third round that that was going to be a hard challenge for him and one that he ultimately came up short in, which is why he gets the grade he gets. And the next fighter we're going to be going with here is Leo Santa Cruz, who defeated Keenan Carvajal via 10-round unanimous decision in a junior lightweight clash. And the grade that we're going to be going with here is a B-. In the end, he did what he had to do. However, he did look a bit rusty to me at times. He just seemed a step or two behind. He he always has this tendency of shaking his hands before, you know, engaging or re-engaging in the action. But this time he seemed to be doing that even a few times more than normal. Just wasn't used to the output that he normally puts out. you got to remember, this is a guy who at times was routinely throwing a hundred punches around. And in this fight, it did not look like he had that kind of engine on him. Now... He was in a weight class that is not specific to him in terms of what he's going to be best at. He probably is still a natural featherweight if he can get down there safely. And on top of that, he's coming back from a loss that was a big loss where he was knocked out cold and a long layoff as a result of it. So, of course, I want to give him a little bit of slack for that. Um, and, you know, again, he was facing in Carvajal a decent fighter who, you know, had, you know, wasn't completely outclassed all the time and actually had some gumption about him and made sure to stay in that fight. And he also got cut early due to an accidental clash, did Santa Cruz. So I want to make sure that I'm being fair here, but did it look like a vintage Santa Cruz performance? Not necessarily. You know, it's one of those things where I think he's going to have to work into it. You know, his style is, you know, in a... In a fight, in microcosm, his style is the way that I think his career is right now, where he's a bit of a slow starter, he has to kind of work his way into it, and then down the stretch is where you see what he has to offer as a fighter. I think this point in his career is similar to that, where restarting it now after that loss, he's going to have to kind of slowly get back into things, work his way into it, and then if he does have that final run in him, you'll see it in maybe two or three more fights from now. But until then, that's the grade he's getting from me. And the final fighter we're going to go with here is Keith Thurman, who defeated Mario Barrios via 12-round unanimous decision. And this, of course, took place in the welterweight division with no title on the line. The grade that I'll be going with here for Thurman is a B-. Now, he made his long way to return and picked up a win where he lost virtually little rounds, if any at all. That's got to be a good thing. The issue is that... Sort of the same problems you might have with Thurman if you're someone that's going to be overly critical of him were kind of still there. He, where he once had that killer instinct that would go after and would try to finish fighters and called himself one time because he knocked people out. Did he do that in this fight? No. Did he try to chase it at times? Yes, but that also made it kind of worse because he didn't get it. You know, he seemed eager to try and stop a guy who was moving up, who had just been stopped by Gervonta Davis, who had just moved up to face Barrios, and he couldn't seem to put him down. You know, obviously he couldn't put him down, I should say, and didn't seem to have that punch in him. Even when he tried to overcommit to that, the second criticism that you have of Thurman always is that he can't take a shot to the body. He gets clipped to the body and proceeds to back away for the next you know, half a round and really just can't seem to recover from there. He was always kind of weary of that shot, which again... When you're looking at a fighter that you want to see go out there and knock people's heads off, a guy being weary of body shots is just not, that those two things don't mix. You can't be concerned about that to the point where it affects who you are as a fighter. 
considering his age and considering the layoff, I think he looked very good. His reflexes were solid. He had great head movement, still very athletic. He moved around the ring very well, both forward and backwards, which backwards is always harder for the older fighter because, again, it requires more coordination. And I'm not, getting, I'm not saying he's ancient, but when you are older and you haven't been active, you certainly can pick up a few years, so to speak, in like kind of fighter age, and you can look a little bit older. But he didn't. He actually looked very good in those respects. The only, like I said, criticism I have is that he did not seem super, super committed and engaged just trying to stop a fighter. He probably should stop. And the moment he faced something where it kind of challenged him, i.e. a shot to the body that kind of always challenges him, he sort of gave indication that he's maybe, again, not as killer instinct Thurman the way he might have been on his come up in the sport. That being said, it was still a very solid performance. And that's a little bit nitpicky, I have to admit that. And at the end of the day, it was still a solid B minus performance, in my opinion, which is, of course, why I went with the grade. In any event, those are my grades, but what grades would you guys hand out? Agree with me? Disagree? Let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at jcaldron underscore job, and you can also email me at jonboxing at gmail.com. Also, be sure to visit jonboxing.com for schedule, results, betting odds, rankings, and more. Definitely be sure to check for my upcoming predictions later this week, which will feature Danny Jacobs versus John Ryder, and as always, until next time.